What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fresh Finance Podcast. My name is Thomas Elms, and I've got my co-host here, Kyle Ryan. Today, we are going to dive into really just the importance, the the, the weight and the, the compounding importance of starting financial planning early and what that can do for you, not only monetarily, but what it can also do for you emotionally. Um, and just essentially starting the planning process early and doing it in the right way to create a, a financial picture in your life that has just such a solid bedrock, such a solid foundation that allows you to build as your life progresses, but also creates an opportunity for you to feel incredibly confident in the financial side of your life so that when life it gets thrown at you, the events get thrown at you, you have confidence and, and knowledge in the fact that your financial plan can withstand um, those negative or those positive events, you know, and Kyle, just kind of kicking it off here, you know, would love to get your take on, you know, the importance of starting early because we are financial advisors, but at the same time we are, you know, younger guys and, you know, we are doing that planning process for ourselves and would love to just kind of get your take on, on, you know, starting the planning process early. Absolutely. I've never heard someone say, Oh, I started planning for this too early under yeah. any circumstance. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, one of the advantages we have is, you know, a lot, like a lot of our younger clients that are close to our age is we're going through the same thing, right. And experience is the best way to learn. So, you know, we're going through these things and we have the same struggles as a lot of people right now. So what I always like to say is, you know, people don't plan to fail. People fail to plan. You know, it sounds a little cliche, but it's, it's really true. You know, and another one that goes right alongside of it that we really preach is we do a lot of proactive planning and try yep. to avoid reactive planning, yep. right? Because a lot of times a client will come to us with an issue that needs to be resolved a month ago, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? So if, if you have proactive planning and, you know, you're planning for things you don't ever want to happen, right? You know, if you disability, life insurance, you know, planning for retirement, making sure that you have enough to live and just planning for the future is really important. And the earlier you do it, the more beneficial it will be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and just kind of hindering on the idea of not only that, but planning in a way that that has more depth to kind of creating a vision and a reason and a why you're doing what you're doing. I think that becomes the bedrock psychologically um, to help reinforce the actions that you're actually taking, right? Um, you know, and I think that's a huge part. And, and, you know, for me, like I kind of have a statement of financial purpose for myself and, the, the reasons for why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. And I love trying to, you know, interact um, and create that idea for clients so that they have that clarity, um, you know, from a values-based planning perspective. And, you know, at the same time, it's something that you just want to create, uh, you know, a financial life that is just, it, it, it can be all, it can be, you know, stopped in a way where it's like anything could get thrown at you and you have, you know, a plan in place for everything. And I think from an advisor's perspective, we bring a lot of value because of the law of numbers with, you know, the number of people that we work with, right? Because one of the things that I think, you know, individual investors or individual planners tend to discount is the lack of um, multitude of experience that they have in differing situations, right? Because you know, if you're an individual investor, an individual planner, you are dealing with the situations and circumstances of your specific situation, right? Whereas we're dealing with a multitude of people who are both similar and different from you. So we can derive those experiences and utilize that as an ability for us to bring a unique perspective into your situation, right? And kind of like that conversation you were you're having around disability, planning for, you know, outcomes that are unexpected is a lot of the outcomes that we bring or the questions that we ask, most people have not necessarily thought of, right? And so I think that that brings a really valuable perspective to starting this young is you'll have the ability to run all of these different um, conversations and possibilities and what if scenarios through your plan so that we can kind of battle test it throughout all of these situations, you know, and I, I think that's what really starts the process, you know, and I think one of the things we wanted to, to really kind of hit on here is just making every portion of your planning incredibly solid. And, you know, that deals anywhere from having, you know, the right amount of cash assets that you feel incredibly comfortable if anything were to happen to having a really solid, efficient estate plan where when you do transition assets, you know, as you pass, those assets are going to the right people for the right purposes and it's in the most tax efficient manner. And, you know, I'd love to kind of get your take on, you know, what that progression looks like for, for you guys. 
Yeah, I think, you know, the most important thing you said is that, you know, no one, no two people are the same, right? Every time you do financial planning, you know, we get asked a lot of questions and our answer to a lot of financial planning questions is it depends because there's not a black and white solution for just about anything. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we find quite often is that clients will have an issue. They'll speak to their friends, family, colleagues, people that they know. And if they did something in a situation, they're like, why shouldn't I do this, right? They make about the same income or in the same financial circumstances, so I'll just do what they did. And a lot of the times that that is not the right way to do things, right? Um, so that's why we always say, you know, the answer to every financial planning question is it depends. You know, you need a plan, you need a financial plan that's not some cookie cutter financial plan, 80 pages and three of it pertains to you. You need something that every step along the way, you know, the advisor, the planner, your team of professionals is thinking about you not only where you are today, but where you want to be in the future. And like you mentioned, Thomas, the most tax the tax, most tax efficient way to get there and just so many other considerations between the future and today and the best way to get there. So individualized financial planning, personalized financial planning is the, the, the best reason to meet with a financial advisor. And that's why it's really daunting to start financial planning because what do you want to talk about at first? There's so many different things. Absolutely. You know, and where do you begin? And that's why we wanted to title this episode, How to Start Financial Planning, How to Begin Having These Conversations. Because I'm sure you've had this, you know, the circumstances where a client comes in and they know what they want to talk about. They have their own agenda. And yeah. of course, you know, being financial advisors, we'll find other things to talk about and add value. But then you have the opposite end where people will come in and say, hey, you know, I don't know what I want to talk about. I just feel as though I need a financial plan. And in both circumstances, we can help provide a lot of value because in both circumstances, we're going to find things that you're not quite thinking about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's just on, on that note, just kind of the the articulation, you know, the the creation of the vision, right? That's kind of where from, from a mental perspective, we can help kind of formulate what that plan could look like and what it should like, look, look like. And then also kind of establishing the action items to actually get there, you know, and we were kind of talking offline before we started here about that LinkedIn post that I made here a while back about what I want out of my financial picture. And I think that it applies to a lot of people because um, it just kind of runs through every scenario that you could consider um, you know, and, and it is just stress tested through all those things. And, you know, just kind of walking through that, because I think there's a lot of value in this, you know, I, and I think we share the same perspective, but really just from a, like a cash flow perspective, the, the first thing is, is I want to be very disciplined about the money that I, I bring in, you know, from my career, from my passion, I want all of that hard earned money to go directly to work on the things that I personally care about. You know, and for me, kind of, I have an order of operations of, of where that money is going to and, you know, establishing that. Also, having safety and the fact that if, firstly, if, if for some reason I was no longer working, right, I, I had, um, you know, enough cash reserves saved up to cover myself um, for multiple months. I mean, for me, I, I like 12 months. You know, I have a year's worth of, of cash and expenses, um, that, that I can, you know, utilize or go to if needed, right, in an emergency fund. And I've also got monies stashed away for any sort of, you know, higher level expenses, like if I need repairs to a home, if I need repairs to a car, if I need to purchase a new car, right, I've got money every month going towards an account that will satisfy that need or that situation, um, you know, and then kind of progressing into investments, right? Some people don't understand the, the need for having investments going into multiple different account types. Um, you know, and so for me, I really like having some monies going into pre-tax accounts where I'm getting the tax advantage now. Some of my money is going to Roth accounts where the, the tax-free advantages are later. And some of the some of the money is going into a taxable account where, you know, I have the flexibility to put as much money as I want in or take as much money as I want out at any time, you know, barring any sort of capital gains. And I just have that ultimate flexibility. I'd love to just kind of get your take on that. I I, I love it. I mean, honestly, I thought, you know, and con continuing on from your LinkedIn post, you know, you really covered the six areas of financial planning. Um, and, you know, maybe it answers your question directly, but, you know, you're covering your cash flow planning. You're looking at your expenses today, what they will be 12 months from now. That changes for a lot of people. Some people, you know, the the, the rule of thumb, if you will, is three to six months. Some people are more conservative. They do 12 months. Some people are more aggressive. They do three, as long as it's there. 
Um, then you get into investment planning, you know, making sure you have the right investment vehicles, tax considerations, which in and of itself is tax planning, retirement planning, estate planning, because you're looking at how it gets passed on to the next generation. Um, we haven't mentioned it yet, but looking at the different types of insurance, you know, being able to put your head on a pillow at night, because if tomorrow you woke up and got hit by a bus, will your loved ones be taken care of? If you yep. got disabled and stopped having your income come in, would you and your loved ones be taken care of? So, oh my gosh, there's so many different ways that you can jump into this and approach it. Um, so that's why, you know, the first way to start is by, you know, starting to think about it, starting to, you know, you don't have to have a plan today. Rome wasn't built in a day, but, you know, that's why I want to emphasize there's so many things that can happen in life that you, if you don't adequately prepare for, can really, really leave you behind the eight ball from a financial perspective. Which yeah, you know, the other parts of your life. Yeah. And, and like the traditional financial advisor, you know, and I feel like this is where we provide a lot of value to the people similar to our age is the traditional advisor, you know, isn't going to work with a client until they're approaching retirement. And that's normally right after um, all of these major life events have happened where you need, you know, some, 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 I wouldn't necessarily call it counseling, but some outside advice, some independent, non, you know, emotionally invested advice and some of the changes that happen, right? Whether that's, you know, and I'm working, you know, with some clients on this right now, but they're, they're getting married in September. Right. And so, you know, we're working through the process of proactive planning and making sure that once they are married, you know, we have all of the name changes going to the place that they are. And then we're updating their estate plan and we're, we're starting to look at, at term life insurance, right. You know, that piece gets missed because most advisors won't work with, you know, somebody unless they have a certain amount of investable assets that they can manage themselves. Right. And, you know, I think that really kind of comes into the part of, you know, marriage to children, you know, and, 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 you know, education saving is a huge one that is much more achievable than you think if you start at the right, um, you know, time frame and you allow that money to compound, you know, and then that progresses into maybe looking at retiring early, um, you know, maybe you're looking at buying a second house. Maybe you're looking at buying a rental property, right, for cash flow and and for some tax advantages, right? Just evaluating those opportunities. But at the end of it all, having an advisor that you can go to with these questions and these desires to help you build out a plan and a strategy for those specific actions, um, you know, to better your financial picture. I think that's just the most important part. You're, you're spot on. That's why the first two meetings you're going to have with a financial advisor are information and data gathering and goal setting, you know, and having yep. those those qualitative discussions to learn more about you. Um, because, you know, honestly, in my opinion, you know, set, financial planning is about 70 percent financial planning and then 30 percent, you know, behavioral planning, you know, yep. behavioral finances. Right. Yep. I just had a client come in and they need to have their kitchen done. They're having they're having a, a child in a few months, but they also want to contribute to their separate SEP IRA. They can't do both. And, you know, objectively thinking, you know, from a tax perspective, contribute to your SEP IRA from an emotional perspective, because we are objectively focused, but emotionally inclined. You know, we understand we're people too, right? So there's a balance. There's a work, there's there, there's a financial and a life balance that we will help you walk through by betting under better understanding your goals. And I always tell my clients, you know, I'm not making decisions for you. I'm helping you make informed decisions, right? Yep. So we just want to give you as much information as possible. We can help provide recommendations, but ultimately the best circumstance for me is when I have a client feel, make a very comfortable, well-informed decision. And that's ultimately where you want to start with financial advising, uh, advice is you want to have, have someone that you can trust who will understand your wishes, your wants, your needs, your goals, and will help you work there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, I think, you know, another thing too, we, we kind of talk on the behavioral side is, is, and I'm sure that you can echo this, but one of the issues that I'm having from an investing perspective with, with younger clients right now, and I'd say, you know, 35 to 40 years old and, and younger is, our time spans, just because of the way in which we we grew up in the world from a technological perspective, are, are, and our attention spans are so much shorter that it's affected our approach to investing. And, you know, that's one of the things that, that I've had to work through with a lot of clients is to help, you know, create this behavioral change in which they're not trying to always just find the next best thing, or they're not trying to, you know, just kind of chase the pony around the market um, and, you know, just tag along with whatever's hot at the, at the time now, you know, because I think trends are, are a big thing for us because 
trends have changed so quickly throughout our lifetime that we've started to un, you know, unconsciously incorporate that to our investment, you know, decision making and just kind of reiterating or getting back to, hey, we want to invest in the right things and hold them for a really long time and just continuously purchase more and more shares of those good things and hold it over over time so that we can build that wealth. Because getting in and out of stuff over the short term can be an effective short term win, but it also can be a, a very ineffective long term loss. Um, you know, and just you know, behaviorally things like that, forming good habits um, early, and you know, having that plan in place quickly. Very well said. The world's getting a lot faster and a lot less impatient. <laughs> Uh, you know, you see it anywhere, not to bring another sports reference from the last one, but I mean, games are, everything's focused on scoring. Baseball is losing an audience because it's, it's slower and people don't want slow, right? Yeah. So, you know, there's always a reversion to the mean, especially within trends. Um, so you're, you're exactly right. You know, it takes a lot of behavioral coaching and a behavioral conversations, uh, particularly about investments, especially when investments are low, right? You have to have someone, you have to have an emotional soundboard there. A lot of clients reach out at the bottom. They say, Hey, I'd like to sell. A lot of clients reach out the top. Hey, I want to buy more. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes stepping back and looking at things objectively, looking at your financial circumstances and deciding if that's really the best decision for you. And that, that again, is ultimately what financial planning is. It's taking a step back, considering every moving piece and making a well-informed decision. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the last thing that I wanted to bring up is just the idea for young people right now is our generation does not want to work until they're 65 or 70. I, I think that's, and, and you know, nobody really wants to work until they're 65 or 70. Um, but I think that our generation is just very focused on the idea of not doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you've got to, you've got to plan even earlier than, you know, the older generation is you've got to start even earlier in order to do that. Cause it's going to require more upfront capital when you retire earlier to sustain that, that longer retirement age. And so, putting together a plan early so that you can create that opportunity to retire early is super important too, because there's a lot of times, you know, in, in this situation where we talk about retirement planning, where if you retire early, you can't touch certain accounts without, you know, incurring a penalty, right? And so having taxable accounts is super important there. And a lot of people don't know how those truly work. And, you know, just setting up that process of how you want to also, you know, if you retire early, how you're going to cover your health insurance before you can get on Medicare. Um, a lot of things are around there surrounding, you know, planning topics that people don't consider when trying to retire early is, is just a, you know, a huge component of what we do and how we do things. Um, you know, and I think it just kind of revitalizes the idea of, of why it's important to plan early, even more than just the idea of compounding for sure. Estate planning, financial planning, they don't apply to the super rich. They apply to everyone. My most successful clients didn't make a million dollars a year. They just saved at a very aggressive rate and planned very early on. Mm -hmm. and covered and insured any pitfalls that could have potentially happened. You don't have to be making a ridiculous amount of money to have a very sound financial plan to secure your future. You know, yeah. that's what we all, that's what we all want one day. I love what I do. I don't come in here for fun. You yeah. know, there, it is a means to an end to a certain extent. And the sooner you get your head around that and start planning for it, the truer, the sooner that end truly comes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this was perfect. If you don't have, do you have anything else? That was it for me. That was a good one. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, if you want to reach out, if you do want to get that planning process started, please reach out to, to myself or Kyle. We'd love to get started with you. Love to talk through the process, see how we can help you. Um, really appreciate you guys following along and we're looking forward to next episode. Thanks so much.